with this drawing, and I only drew half because I was in, I was wanting it to be symmetrical. First thing I did was uh, kind of squeeze the the illustration in there using the curves um, inside of Corel Draw. I used these circles to set up just some guidelines so that when I created the logo itself, I could use those. See, I use those in, interior circles to kind of create symmetrical shapes, and that really helps when you're we're developing a logo that's going to be somewhat geometrical um, because you don't have to spend as much time in making it look right, um, and that's important. So these these shapes, if they're kind of based on curves, um, they, they tend to look a little cleaner. And you can see I was trying to create some energy there by making thick and thin shapes, so kind of like a collig a calligraphy shape, so if, uh, you can kind of see where some some edges are thicker and thinner. And everybody likes to use different tools um, in Corel Draw. Some people prefer the the bezier tool. Some people prefer the pen tool. I've just learned using the freehand tool and I just make real quick line shapes and then I double click the shape tool, convert them to curves. You'll notice that in some of my other tutorials. Um, and what I did here was I duplicated the inside shape, slid it down to create an echo curve. And what I mean by that is it's a curve that's the same curve line as your other shape. And that's important in, in images like this where you got repetitive pieces. Um, so, and then I did the same thing there. I copied that piece and then modified it. Um, to kind of create the bottom part of this image. And here I just kind of created a real quick shape and again double click the shape tool, converted all the curves, um, and then kind of went through and created these shapes. And usually it's, it's helpful if you have some sort of reference. You know I did a drawing here. In some cases you might use a reference um, of uh, clip art that you have or something. Um, obviously uh, don't steal, right? Uh, you know, create your own thing. Um, here again, I use the circle to refine the shape to kind of make things a little bit smoother and, and make the pieces look a little bit uh, more symmetrical and cleaner. Um, the whole idea there is to try to get shapes that conform, so you can see, conform to the outside edge of this circle so that when you build this design, um, you know, you're building it so that when it's done, it looks like it all just kind of fits together. Um, and that's kind of hard to do with, and you can see when you create one piece, you can kind of duplicate, shift them down, shrink them a little bit. Um, you want to keep the thickness the same, and then I just kind of crushed them a little bit and arced them. Um, and then, then I got to build these bottom, kind of like the tail feathers part. Um, and again, you know, double click in. And it's a little bit tedious work. When you're building a logo, um, it's important to kind of stop, take stock, and make sure it's looking right as you're doing it. And sometimes, um, Sometimes, depending on the, the, you know, if you've done this sort of work before and your, you know, your comfort level and that sort of thing, you'll get well into it. Like I was building the head here, you'll get well into it, and, and stuff just doesn't look right. So then you have to back up. So that's why it's important to, um, to, uh, you know, kind of know, know your tool really well, and then go ahead and build stuff out as quick as you can. Because the faster you do it, the more likely you are to uh, be able to have time left over to edit. Because otherwise, you can run out of time. Um, some people, when they are working their, in the, you know, at their own pace or they're working out of their house, they can spend days and days on logos, and it's just like exhausting. So you want to kind of as quickly as you can get to know the tools so that you can kind of invert it. Now, so you can see, I kind of made these pieces, um, and so I just flipped them in a lot of cases. Like I flipped the whole thing there, and then I moved the drawing out of the way, and then I converted it, um, and it looks pretty good. It's not bad. Um, now, this is a logo for me for a, a club that I'm going to put together on uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and fitness and stuff. So it's always harder to do a logo for yourself. I wanted it to look a certain way. Um, and, you know, I was trying to create kind of the illusion. Uh, the name of the club is going to be McHenry. And so I wanted there to be kind of an, a noticeable M in the middle here. Um, that was going to kind of compose the bird. Uh, it was supposed to be symbolic of a phoenix. So, you know, kind of rising out of the ashes sort of thing. Um, I kind of picked this font because I thought the font had points on it that echoed the, echoed the, um, you know, points in the logo, and I kind of created a secondary curve here so it would have a little bit more energy. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you can overwork stuff, and that was one of the cases here. So I was just kind of laying it out and seeing how it looked here. Um, and when I finished it, as you can see there, I can just move it all the way down to where it's ended here. You can kind of see that uh, this is where I finished up. Now, 
this is where it, it got interesting. Like, I was fairly happy with this. I thought, oh, you know, this is pretty good. Um, and this is a good step to have with a logo. So when I was, this was my finishing point. What I wanted to do was now I wanted to set it aside. I wanted to set it aside and then come back. Now, sometimes you don't have time to set it aside and come back for a whole day, um, which is sometimes what I recommend depending on the, you know, the timeline you have for your logo. Uh, sometimes you only have a little bit of time. Sometimes you can set it aside for 15 minutes and come back and you get a fresh look. And it's important to get a fresh look because what can happen is you can improve it a lot. So I kind of researched a little more. I looked at some phoenixes that were online that I liked, and then I realized, well, I just need to I need to change the way the head looks. So I flipped the head, and then I made a symmetrical piece here that was a little bit heavier. I made the head a little thicker. I made the beak a little bit narrower, um, and I went ahead and made this a little longer and a little sharper. And then I made the eye different. So I made the eye a negative knockout of the top and made the whole basically the whole top of the head solid. And I think that really helped and made a difference. The other thing was with logos, we typically read from left to right. So I thought, you know, it'd probably have more energy and just fit with being progressive and um, if it was, you know, looking the other way. So I flipped it the other way as well. Now some other little pieces that I changed, you can see this piece down here. I wanted it to look a little bit more like an M. So I went ahead and solidified this piece just so that it would spin and kind of maybe just look a tiny bit more like an M. You also see I cleaned up these pieces down here um, to make them fit with tail. Obviously chop the feet off and just lean that out. Cleaned up the tail a little bit. Um, and then I did one more refinement after this. So I, I did this, I put it away, and there was still something just, uh, it wasn't, I just wanted to tweak it one more time. Um, I did kind of a negative piece right here. Um, and then I went back and here's here's the final change for the logo. I went from this version, which you see I just refined it, and I, I set it aside again. Then it came back later day, and I was like, I just want to clean up those feathers. Like there's just a little bit too much of a weird thick tribal here at the top. It doesn't look like the top of a wing, kind of. So I cleaned that up and made it really sharp. I took one of these bottom pieces and just really, so it would be more symmetrical. And then the main thing was I cleaned up this top feather so it doesn't have this double flare here. I made it cleaner like this with a little heavier on the top just so it's unified with all the rest and then I fixed this inside neck piece to be more less like a weird um, geographic shape here I thought I wanted it to flow with the rest of the image so I made this kind of cut out here um, I cleaned up this loop a little bit more so it f flowed it wasn't clunky right here in the middle um, and just just a tiny bit you know adjusted the feathers a little bit and that was pretty much it and then so this was my final and then the last piece I decided was I wanted more of a modern um, a modern font because if you remember that original font that I had um, that was in here let me go back to it here you see that font right there was just looking it just looked a little bit too thick and it didn't have enough dynamic to it. It was it was uh, too heavy for the some of the delicate little pieces in these feathers. I thought, oh, I just need something a little more modern. So I went ahead and, and picked out a more modern font here and then put the new logo in here like this with the modern font. And I felt, I felt really good about that. I think that that maybe said more of what I wanted to say. And then I did all these different color choices on different pages. So I duplicated it real quick and I did the other different color choices. So this is a navy background with red, then black with red. And this has allowed me to kind of rapidly do pick through the colors that I might like. So this was the final choice that we decided on for the, for the club. And uh, it kind of shows you the different color uh, you know different color options that'll be for garments and that sort of thing and this hopefully this is helpful to you as far as not only how to build the logo and going through and building it quickly but more importantly sometimes is setting it aside even a couple of times to refine it and meaning refine the typeface maybe and make the the thickness of the type fit the thickness of the um, logo itself and then also looking at colors and then looking at uh, refining your shapes just so it's as symmetrical as it can be so hopefully uh, you guys can work on your own logos and use some of this to uh, to make them polished even a couple more steps.